chapter 9. What if the word is epic song, gospel, lungs, got a whale? I reject any immoderate stuttering, incoherence, but also sugar-tongued Satan. Mephistopheles ought to have to struggle to split believers, A. Eh? But there's a hitch. Satan is too cold-blooded, an insinuating, creeping predator, a genius at prompting hallucinations. So you don't seem half bad at all, but more like a buddy, bantering in a bar, spinning, captivating yarns, exuding brio, and never openly skeptical about scripture. He just notes that the commandments have loopholes that the lawyerly slither through easy. Or he posits that scripture be as precisely imprecise as a fog beset shoreline. The fiendish conundrum is to know when God be truly ready to open up hell, to plummet down the damned, or when he be just uh, fronting. The Messiah teaches scripture is the skeleton key, each heart's a cage. He quit carpentry because he believed the echo of his hammer ringing against nails was God's voice constantly explosive. As a boy, X knew that turpentine clears obscurities, impurities, fumigates, and scours. Sawdust also has a clean, hot aroma, a scent like sweet boiled corn. When Pops Joseph, too mortal and mistake prone, slashed open his thumb due to a carving knife gaff, X passed his palm over the ruddy digit. And though X's hand was now red stained, Joe's thumb was whole again. The slit flesh closed up as if it was itself newborn. But Joseph's visage was a stone fortress. He felt he was supposed to heal X's scalps and scrapes, not the reverse. Accidentally, X had proved again just how superfluous Joey's paternity really was. X's holy father's business is harsh. The superheating of brimstone to hurl upon the disobedient. Anyway, the gathering of a church is a hodgepodge, a grab bag of types, and not everyone can be good. If the netting of sardines is profit, even when some of the dinky fish are just unsatisfactory, hardly surviving unto a second bite or chew. Well, so it is that some of us sinners, those schooled in a congregation, don't repay our redemption. We're too recalcitrant in our indulgences. X got to know how to laugh and going about netting, seining, believers. We turn no fish away even if some end up corrupt tinkers, stinkers. Church is chosen people, yep, but the elect are those who stay. Our Lord uplifted Lazarus, but that revived rogue proved unscrupulous in deeming his original wife still his widow, just so that he could wed a new lay 20 years his junior. Peter, jumped out the boat when X was strolling over rolling waves, imagining he could treat the water as grass, compressing the dusky liquid with his feet, resolving it into a prairie. But he imploded down into the marine, went straight down like a rock, for his faith was dissolute. Given the failures of mortals to benefit permanently off X's miracles, we should parcel the tricks out parsimoniously package them as select boffo spectacles. I gotta be more realistic because I tend to the treasury. To dispense coins is to govern like a king. Yes, bread fattens bellies that words alone just flatten. Envelopes sugar us with silver and that sustains us more than prayers. When folks promise heal me and I'll give you all gold, wine, horses, daughters, we should secure all. I want to break in horses and camels and stud all merry, mammary mammals. 
medicine, medication, healing should cost a fee, a tax, or else we're a parcel of whimsical do-gooders, deserving to be paid in cats, in practical commodities. Excess healing ministry should make us all as rich as the entire Roman Senate. Royal jelly is honey served on a gold plate for a gold-plated palate. But who else but me cares for this outfit's provisioning? But we crusade against incalculable ignorance, unlimited stupidity, so only gold can shield our movement, buttress us resolutely versus treachery, fortress us powerfully versus assassins. From Venezia, Italia, Trontean, De Sombra, 2012. Reading from Canticles 2, MMXX, Scriptural Rewrites.